We are starting in live one minute, sir. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, Mr. Veerapan, uh, uh, the uh, session is uh, live on uh, YouTube. Yes, ma'am. Kritika, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. An investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. We have gathered here to take back such an asset. Excellent morning to one and all gathered here. It's my privilege to stand before you all with words of warm welcome to the Atal Mentor Session. I welcome our correspondent, Mr. Ashok Shankar, our secretary, Mr. Anand Shankar, our principal, Mrs. Jayanti, our vice principals, Mrs. Usharani and Mrs. Samundeshwari, our teachers and dear children to this wonderful session. Atal is a workspace where young minds are shaped to ex explore and express their ideas through hands-on, do-it-yourself mode and learn innovative skills. Here, young children are given chances to work with tools and equipments to understand the concepts of science, technology, engineering, and math. With a mission to cultivate and develop young innovators, Atal Labs proved to be the best opportunity to the students to mold their budding minds, even in this pandemic situation, and prove their scientific excellence. Here, I'm glad to welcome our Atal Mentor of Change, Mr. Valiyavan, who always supports and motivates us. We welcome you, sir. Today, we have two eminent personalities in our midst to share their experiences and ideas for the innovative path of our students. It's my pleasure to welcome and introduce Mr. Veerappan Swaminathan from Singapore, who's our special dignitary. He's a dynamic and innovative social entrepreneur, is a founder and director of Sustainable Living Lab Private Limited Singapore. So the Sustainable Living Lab co-designs innovation projects with the three P sector in Asia, that is public, private, and people, and implements solutions using foresight, technology, and community development methods to create a more sustainable future in alignment with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. His awards are noteworthy. He has received NUS, National University of Singapore, Outstanding Young Alumni Award 2019, ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, Youth Fellowship Award 2019. We welcome you, sir. Now, I would like to call upon our teacher, Mrs. Jayanti, to introduce our special guest, Mr. Shashwat Gangwal. Thank you. Thank you, Kritika, ma'am. I'm yes, extremely uh, glad to introduce Mr. Shashwat Gangwal to you all, who is currently the youngest investment manager at an impact-focused fund, Sagana, where he looks after food tech and climate related solutions. He's a passionate social entrepreneur who has founded a startup Infinity Box, which has now partnered with Swiggy to do away with single use plastic containers and replace them with reusable food grade containers. He has also worked with McKinsey and UNDP, which is United Nations Development Program before this. I really, uh, I'm very happy to welcome you, sir. And I also extend my warm welcome to one and all present here. Thank you. Ramya, ma'am, ma mute your... Mute your mic. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, sir. Thank you, Kritika, ma'am, and Jayanti, ma'am. Now, I would like to call upon Ms. Yogeshwari to share a few information about our school at Atal Labs. Excellent morning to another present here. On the special occasions, I would like to share the glimpse of SSP Atal with you all. Atal Lab, the bride of the SSC started on December 2018. Going beyond the line, our Atal Lab was served as a resource of opportunity to explore and exhibit the young talent. Atal Lab was initiated with the equipment that supports the innovative projects like 3D printers, robotic kits, electronic components, and advanced mechanical tools. Community Day. Our Atal Lab was inaugurated on the Community Day in the presence of community and the children from different schools. Commencement of activity, Students were involved in DIY activities with the available materials and also exhibited their innovative projects at Atel Thinker First 2019. In the presence of our honorable mentor, Mr. Valli Appel, Atel Thinker First 2019 was held, which provided a great exposure for the students. Their projects were acknowledged by the Japanese kids. 
students explains their projects to the mentor and onlookers and receives awards from their projects skype session skype sessions was conducted the last year for the students to interact with the experts to clarify their doubts on the projects at the online interact uh, in uh, case 2020 even this pandemic situation we successfully organized online at the thinker fest 2020 in the presence of dr tirupati as the chief guest numerous projects were displayed during this event best out of the best projects were selected and recognized with the awards saving the best for the last our school participated in ncc projects 2019 out of which three were selected at the national level online interactive session captured the best moment of the memory we had an interactive session with the resource persons on the topic of sustainable development and circular economy in the presence of mrs shalini goelbala and dr jayashree sharma looking forward to more and more innovations through our atal lab with you all support thank all for giving us an opportunity to share about ssv atal during this wonderful occasion thank you all i i would like thank to mention a point here yeah, yeah I, and uh, our atal lab has got a star school of the month uh, this uh, november and uh, this has been recognized by atal innovation mission and uh, it is uh, a great honor for uh, all of us and then uh, thank you teachers yeah yes sir sir actually to again add on sir from the month of july we are continuously in the list sir for every month from july till now we are continually our name is there in the list sir. we have to that thank you so much for your support sir. thank you sir so now i request our honorable mentor uh, valipan sir to share few words about our chief guest yeah uh, we are honored to have uh, two seasoned i would say seasoned but young and dynamic entrepreneurs in the social development space now sustainable development uh, maybe for some of our students uh, in the last session uh, uh, our teachers have mentioned that they have done a lot of projects but unknowingly in the sustainable development space and uh, then after hearing the lecture on uh, circular economy they told us and now we know what they have done in the recent time and they are getting attached more and more with the sustainable development and they are very much interested in delivering their uh, say innovation capabilities and we are honored to have two speakers young dynamic and then seasoned entrepreneurs in the social uh, entrepreneurial space and we want to hear and uh, it is a pure blend of uh, say artificial intelligence on side in another side uh, infinity box is uh, bringing a lot of innovative solution to indian market and uh, i am expecting a lot of takeaways from these two entrepreneurs and uh, energize our students to, to get into the entrepreneurial world and innovation and develop a lot of innovation and uh, sagasbad has a partner with the swiggy and we are expecting a lot of takeaways from swiggy now to entertain us and then uh, and i don't want to take much time please uh, thank you thank you Thank you, sir. So now I humbly invite our chief guest, Mr. Shashwant Gangwal, to share about artificial intelligence on sustainable development. Um, it's Mr. Virapan, sir. No? Virapan, Virapan will be delivering. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sir. So I request our chief guest, Mr. Virapan, sir, to deliver few words about artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, allow me to just give me a minute. Let me just switch to my slide deck. and I, i would like to mention a point mr virapan has already participated in uh, atl function in other school also yeah. yeah so he has a long association with our atl students and uh, we are happy to, to receive uh, his words today yeah okay. thank you thank you so much uh let me just okay i think you all see my screen all right uh hi everyone and uh good morning and good afternoon as well uh i'm actually based in singapore right now where it is 12:50 uh pm uh just uh, before lunch 
so I hope you all had your breakfast and are also looking forward to this session. Um, so this particular photo was uh, taken at, um, at, a, at, a, at a school in, in Delhi uh, called uh, Sarwan High School and basically that was the first place where they, we ran the uh, AI uh, curriculum uh, within uh, CBSE schools. Uh, and in fact, um, in thing earlier, well, last last year, I think, uh, CBSC basically made AI a skill subject uh, within the curriculum, and and uh, I was involved in the design of that curriculum as well. Um, so Sustainable Living Lab, uh, I think they shared earlier, your teacher shared earlier, is that we are a social enterprise, and we facilitate technology innovation. And uh, right now, we operate in three countries. So we founded in Singapore, but we also operate in Indonesia, and our office in India is actually in Delhi, uh, in uh, Patel Nagar. Um, in terms of uh, AI, I mean, uh, besides um, some of the projects, uh, we have been quite interested in figuring out how this new technology area uh, can support uh, some of the SDG areas that we are concerned about. Uh, in particular, we are concerned about the skills gap or digital skills gap that's happening. Uh, today, if you find that uh, technology is, the speed of it is far outpacing our ability to catch up uh, with it. Uh, so the real concern is that as time goes on, uh, more and more people will be left out of the benefits or advantages of some of these technological changes. Uh, so we hope as an organization to address uh, some of that. Uh, so our work has taken us all over the world. Uh, today we work on uh, AI readiness projects in 13 countries around the world. Uh, some countries are like South Korea, Germany, uh, Japan, uh, South Africa, US, uh, Singapore of course, Indonesia and so on. Um, yeah, and, and you can see some of the work that we have over here. So it, today in particular I want to share with you about AI. Uh, and you know in the amount of time that I have I want to give you uh, a basic coverage. So the idea here is that you probably won't remember many things from this lecture, uh, but what I hope you'll remember is you'll remember the keywords, uh, which you can hopefully uh, find on Google yourself subsequently, um, and so that you can you know, uh, search and do your own uh, investigations. Um, so um, if you have any questions and so on uh, along the way, uh, feel free to ask. I think there has been a question by somebody. I saw someone raise up their hand. Uh, but otherwise, you can always write your questions in the chat group, uh, and I like to usually answer questions uh, along the way. Okay, so the five topics: what is AI? What can AI answer? Why learn, teach AI? What does it mean to be AI ready? And how can AI sustainability come together? Okay, so these are the five things we want to cover today. So, firstly, what is AI? Um, there are many definitions out there, and there isn't a one single definition. But this one is from Nvidia. Nvidia is one of the key players in the AI space. Um, so artificial intelligence is basically any kind of technique that enables a computational system to mimic human intelligence. And it's not new. I mean, it's been around uh, since, you know, uh, before the 1950s as well. Um, and, and there has been several waves of AI uh, uh, because people uh, thought that, you know, when computer uh, processing speeds uh, improved tremendously with a microchip, that that will handle the AI uh, didn't happen. Uh, when people thought that you know, uh, when the prices of uh, devices became very cheap and so on, it would handle AI, uh, that didn't happen. So in a sense, the AI interest has come and gone uh, over the years, over the decades. Now, what has been very different is that um, in 2010 onwards, uh, we had two things come together. By 2010, because internet has been around since about the uh, 1987 onwards, right, in a big way, uh, we had enough data uh, you know, being created by people that it allowed for some kind of uh, machine learning techniques uh, to, to take place. Right? Secondly, you also have processing power that improved tremendously. And third, you basically, uh, you know, in particular, had the convolutional neural network uh, technique uh, come uh, into, into, into being. Uh, so because of those things, there was a big boom in AI. Right? So, um, some of you are quite young over here, I think the students are quite young, but maybe the teachers would know uh, that a lot of this thing is quite recent. So uh, machine learning uh, is basically a subset of AI. Um, it's basically, and I'll show you a diagram of what machine learning means, uh, but the idea is that instead of developing rules 
for the program to follow the program by understanding of data develops its own rules right that's what it means so and and, and deep learning basically is another subset uh, and in particular it is used a lot for image uh, uh, processing techniques okay so what does it mean to do machine learning and so on right so in the early part of the uh, history right what will happen is that uh, let me just see if I can notate over here okay I can't see the annotate but that's okay uh, but anyway so in the when when uh, when people started programming computers and so on they would have the data they would type in the rules of how to treat the data and then you get a series of rules and then you get your answers right with the machine learning approach what happens is that you have the data and you have the answers and then you tell the machine uh, can you figure out how these data will link to the answers what kind of rules will get you to link to the answers uh, and that's essentially what a machine learning approach is so of course to do this well you got to have a tremendous amount of data right uh, so for example you know uh, when you're training model right uh, just having 100 images of a dog or a cat won't be sufficient uh, you need about 1000 2000 10000 pictures of a dog and a cat to be for the machine to be able to decide what is the difference between a dog and a cat but of course if you ask a human being if you look at it we'll know oh, that's a dog that's a cat right so so in a sense the machine is still not very smart right it still needs a lot of data in order to do that uh, but if you go and tell a baby a child and you just show uh, two three different types of cats and two three different types of dogs the baby can tell you oh that's a dog that's a cat uh, so in some ways artificial intelligence is still catching up uh, trying to keep up uh, with what we currently have as human intelligence uh, but for very specific narrow kind of task such as playing chess uh, playing a particular game with fixed rules and so on uh, these are extremely powerful so why learn or teach right because the amount of data being created is tremendous right so each day 2.5 quintillion uh, bytes of data being created uh, ai will impact nearly every industry in fact it already is impacting every industry uh, and at every major technology company today uh, wherever they are in the world right in india us china and so on they're all investing in ai right and and what you find is that you know the ai space is changing so quickly that everybody is a beginner uh, which means that if you are someone starting out you're not too far behind you know it's a relatively low barrier entry and at this point in time if you enter the space uh, or you start learning about these things uh, then you know, uh, as time goes by you'll find yourself in a very advantageous position and everywhere around the world there's a huge talent gap talent shortage right uh, so just give you an idea right in singapore starting pay for anybody working in the ai space generally you can expect you know slightly over hundred thousand uh, per, per year right, annually so i think uh, one singapore dollar is about uh, 50 rupees right, thereabouts uh, so in case you can calculate from there so what does it mean to be ai ready right so one of the things is that as a student over here right uh, there are many parts you know uh, to trying to be good at ai but i think at this stage of your life you probably want to be ai ready right uh, because the technologies that we are covering today in ai and so on these will evolve right by the time you, you graduate by the time you actually start working and so on the technology space will have actually uh, morphed substantially uh, so as a result uh, what's more important is not to be learning specific technologies per se but having the mentality and mindset to be ai ready uh, so that means three things right? that means having an accurate understanding of ai that means being able to access and use the tools uh, skillfully and also being able to create uh, and use the tools to basically uh, develop so for educators you recognize right uh, bloom's taxonomy uh, so, so the idea is that we don't just want students to uh, understand uh, AI, uh, but we want them to be able to create uh, at the higher end of the Bloom's taxonomy level. So what can AI answer? Right? So there are generally five kinds of questions you can ask AI. Um, one is how is data organized? So let's say you have a huge amount of data about something, like let's say you got a voting election results or you got water pollution data, something, right? but how is it organized? Uh, you can ask also uh, is something uh, this or that right so is something a cat or a dog is something uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know a vegetable with insects or a vegetable without insects so you can ask uh, a or b or x or y kind of question you can also ask if something is normal or abnormal and this is particularly useful right so if you do like chest x-rays or lung x-rays uh, normally a person is read it and identify whether or not it's actually a problem uh, but uh, with this approach, if you feed the data of enough sufficient x-rays, 
uh, maybe about 10,000, 100,000 x-rays, uh, then the system will be able to tell you whether this particular x-ray is something normal or is something abnormal going on, right, in the x-ray. Uh, also, you can uh, do prediction, right? So, for example, if you look at, now every day, one thing I, I find very interesting is that in the radio in India, right, they will always uh, say in the morning, what is the vegetable prices uh, for the day, right? So, I think I always find that very interesting, right? But uh, there are so many, so many years of daily vegetable price data being collected right, in India. Uh, so technically, if, if you have sufficient data, uh, you could uh, potentially even do price prediction or what vegetable daily prices will be like uh, know, uh, uh, two months from now, three months from now, and so on. Uh, so that can be something quite interesting. Right? Uh, also, in terms of the question of what should you do next, right? so in a fixed system, fixed environment like a chess game, for example, right? uh, what is the next chess move that the computer needs to make? Right, so questions like that, uh, using technical or reinforcement learning, you can ask AI those kind of questions. So uh, this particular slide is quite important because these five kind of questions are basically what AI can answer today. Right? Uh, so, so forget about all those robots that you know will take over human lives and jobs and whatever and so on. I think all that is it's a bit of a science fiction. Uh, the reality is more like what I'm showing over here. Like these are the five typical major questions the AI can answer. Right? So if the kind of job that you're doing will be taken away by the fact that these questions can be answered, uh, then you are in trouble. Right? But uh, if, if you are in the kind of job or work that is not going to be affected by questions like this, then it's not an issue. Right? Then I think you will continue to, to have your, your job and, and so on and so forth. So AI is not one thing, there's many domains on it. Okay? Uh, so in particular, uh, when we look at uh, domains and all that, uh, there is, you know, uh, in particular, I think the more popular ones are number three, natural language processing, uh, machine learning number four, number six, computer vision, number seven, robotics, and so on. So there are many domains, but there are some that are a bit more uh, well developed, a bit more popular than others. Uh, but they also can be applied to multiple subject areas. So the way to think of AI based techniques is to view them not as a subject by itself or a component by itself, but as a literacy, right? So, so today you uh, think of it in terms of I have a numeracy skill, I have literacy skill, I have critical thinking skill, uh, and you have AI skill, right? So numeracy, I mean, uh, and, and uh, literacy skill, these are not uh, subjects by themselves, right? They are something that you need in order to learn about something else, right? So they are foundational skills. So in a sense, being able to apply AI tools, which means is that ability to deal with data, right? That becomes a foundational skill that can apply to a broad range of subjects, topics, whatever you do. Uh, so even if, let's say, you might subsequently go and study social science, uh, you will still have, might probably have to use uh, AI techniques and AI uh, processes in order to do your work better, right? So. So don't think of AI as, as, a, as a topical area or a subject which is just for oh, computer science or IT, you know. I think that's a very uh, narrow way of uh, thinking about it. So not everything about AI is great, right? So uh, if you look at the journal Nature, Nature is one of the top scientific journals in the world, uh, and it did assessment right, against the various sustainable development goals, as you can see here, uh, numbers 1 to 16 and 17, 17 goals. Uh, and on the left hand side, you can see the positive impact of AI, right, uh, on the goals and how they evaluated it. And on the right hand side, you can see the negative impact. So particularly, you know, uh, number 10, I think number 10, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, gender equality, right? So one of the big problems in the AI space is that if you go to an average class uh, where they're teaching this or where a student trying to learn this, largely you will find it's mostly boys. And there's honestly no reason why it needs to be mostly boys, but that's just the way it is because uh, many people have this old-fashioned uh, men mentality and mindset saying that, oh, you know, this is not for girls and so on. I mean, so that's one big problem. And another big problem in number one, number one goal, number one SDG is called no poverty, right? Now, all these things are being taught to people like us over here who can afford to use Zoom, you know, have Saturday aside, uh, don't have to go and work for money, right, and so on. Uh, so we're all very privileged people, right? We're all extremely privileged people uh, and, 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 and this seems to be that only privileged people can able to access uh, AI tools, technologies, and so on. And obviously, that's a problem, right? Because the gap, as I shared earlier, 
uh, will get wider and wider and wider. Right? So one of the things that's very important is to figure out how do we close the gap in terms of uh, uh, you know poverty, how do we close the gap in terms of gender equality, in terms of education uh, when it comes to AI skills. So when you look at AI projects, when you want to do AI project, right? Okay, I, I want to show you this because I think a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions of what it takes to do an AI project. Uh, and I know all of you at the ATLs, right? Uh, you guys are always building projects. You guys are always uh, doing uh, fun stuff and so on. Uh, so I thought it might be useful for you to understand what an AI project cycle is like. Uh, and you might see that in some ways it is similar to a project cycle if you are doing a electronics or maker project. Uh, but in some ways it can be different as well, right? So an AI project cycle, first thing you want to do is you want to scope the problem. You want to make sure that the problem is something that falls within the five questions uh, which I shared earlier, right? So if the problem doesn't fall within that, it is not a problem that AI can solve, okay? It's not a problem that AI can solve, and so you should look for other methods of solving it. Now once you score the problem, you have to acquire the data, right? Because remember we said that this only works if you have a significantly large set of data. Now the problem is that for most SDG type projects, the data doesn't currently exist. Now, what do we have data for in the world today? We have data for how many people watch YouTube, Netflix, all kind of entertainment stuff. Right? But if you ask for the really important stuff, we don't have very good data on that. Uh, so data acquisition, data collection is actually a very important part. And this is where things like IoT and all that, uh, surveying, all that comes in. right? But you got to collect your data and acquire it first. Now, once you have that, you have to do data exploration, which means that you have to understand with that data, you know, uh, what's happening with that, right? What are some of the trends observed in that? Uh, what are some of the you know uh, um, uh, 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 things that you can see or the questions you can ask about data and so on. Now once you've done that, you will start doing what is true the AI kind of work, right? You will apply the relevant AI models and you will see what kind of results you get in terms of accuracy, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, speed. Uh, you know there are various parameters that you model for and you test for. And once you evaluate that, once once you model it, you evaluate it, and after the evaluate, you will deploy it because a model just can sit on your computer. Right? You got to deploy it in a front end. You got to make a web app for it, or you got to make a, a phone mobile app for it in order to deploy uh, that particular uh, solution. Uh, so these are the uh, you know six uh, six stages right of the AI project cycle, and and I think uh, this is something useful for you to know. You got to try and do your own AI projects subsequently. Okay, uh, so I want to show you some projects. Okay, so this is a project that uh, we did, uh, and we did this project with uh, Raitong Organics Farm. They are a farm in Thailand. They are Thailand's largest organic rice farm. And uh, so, Nandini, you have a question? Shanti, ma'am, uh, children can ask any question related to AI, ma'am. Grade 11 children, uh, regarding your project, you can post your questions. Okay, I'll carry on. Okay, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please write it in the chat as well. Okay, I'll yeah. read it along the way. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, so anyway, uh, this particular uh, uh, rice farm, right, the, 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 the problem that was happening was that, so rice farms, how they work is that uh, not every rice farm has a mill, right? Uh, so this particular rice farm has a mill. And they don't just process their own rice, they also process rice from about 36 other farms uh, around them. And now typically in the farming space, right, the transport cost is a very substantial cost uh, and usually accounts for about 30% of the cost in terms of rice. Now when they do milling, uh, rice milling, uh, you what, what happens is that rice comes in different grades, right? Uh, so they would basically uh, uh, do the milling process for about two weeks. But in the first two or three days, they're building the highest grade of rice. And subsequently, every day, they'll be going one grade lower, one grade lower, and so on. Uh, so how it works in the mill is that the farmers will send the rice over in lorries, right? Uh, all the sacks of rice and so on. And basically, the more rice you're carrying, the more petrol, right? You have to spend, you have to wait, you have to use. And so if, for example, they bring on day one uh, uh, five bags of rice which are grade A and five bags of rice which are grade B, the grade B rice will be sent back. It will not be kept in the mill, right? So the farmer now going to pay again a second time, right? To make a return trip with a half load of uh, rice back in the lorry. So to to prevent this unnecessary uh, rice load 
and also to allow for some better quality control and all that, uh, what we did was we are currently building uh, AI rice grading uh, uh, tool. Right. So what happens is that uh, with this tool, the farmers on their own farm can grade the rice or submit the grading of the rice uh, to the mill to check before they send the rice there. Right, so you don't want to make a wasted trip over there and send back a half load and so on. Uh, uh, and, and, and this can lead to some substantial savings for them uh, if this can be done. Uh, so you can see some representative images over here. Right, So the rice, uh, so initially at the bottom left hand corner was the original prototype that we made. Um, then subsequently now we're using a, a scanner and so on. Right, but like everybody, you know, even in a company, right, when we start doing projects, it always looks very ugly, it always looks very small, you know, it looks very put together and so on. But that's how you start, right? And then um, the processing images you can see as well. So it able to detect rice. Everything that is in green is rice as a whole grain. So any broken grain and so on, you can see it's marked in red. And uh, once that is done, then you can also sort uh, the rice accordingly as well on the top left hand corner as you can see. Okay. So this is a rice grading project, rice classification project. Uh, there are also two other projects I want to show. I want to show you. So this project is actually uh, uh, by a group of uh, girls from Salwan Girls School in New Delhi. Uh, and I will. Sorry, I got to stop my video again because I think it will share computer sound. Okay, right. let me just. Okay, good. okay. I think it should work. Let's see. Please let me know if you can't hear. Hello everyone. I am Tina. She is Sanya, and she is Harshita. Our project is Happiness Guru, which is an AI model that can flag the mental health among school students and notify the consult counselors and teachers. Nowadays, students try to tackle their problem themselves rather than consulting it with someone else, which is the main cause of stress among them. Hence, we have designed this model. So, the working of this model is basically divided into three stages. The very first one is the emotion detection. It detects, it detects your current mood on the basis of facial expression, and then the second we come over to second stage which is which have a nine mcq type questions it consists of nine mcq type questions which have need to be answered by the users and then after answering these questions if the score if the score of all the responses is above a threshold then we proceed over to the next step otherwise the the working is stopped over there then coming over to the next step that is the last step the last step consists of four descriptive questions which need to be answered by the user in these four questions the user can vent all his or her thoughts and opinions free uh, with free mind and can tell and can tell what he or she like to express so after for, uh, filling this form, the SVM, which is our model on which is the algorithm on which our model has been trained, will predict whether the student is stressed or not. If the student is stressed, then the he or she will be recommended to the counselor or the concerned class teacher. Otherwise, it will be and it will be a positive outcome. Okay, so uh, so you saw the project. Uh, she talked about something called SVM. It means support vector machines. It's a kind of an algorithm method. Uh, but in any case, the project, how it works, I think they explained, right? So uh, this project is very interesting because they actually compare the results they came out from their model versus a standard psychological assessment done by a professional psychologist, right? And they found that there was a 90% accuracy of uh, whatever is it that they were developing. So actually for a, for a student project, it was actually quite good. Uh, so there's some questions in the chat I will take. Uh, so whether AI, F, okay, so first thing is, I think Sujata asked, can quality of rice be studied using AI? Yeah, certainly, right? So in terms of rice, sorry, in terms of rice, generally, uh, there are a few things to look for, right? So there are, now first thing first, you must understand that when you want to export rice, there are standards. Every country has standards. So you got to get hold of a standards document. Now you get hold of this document, right? Based on the variety or the, the particular uh, breed of rice, uh, you will have a couple of things that they look for. Uh, first things first is that what is the length of the grain? Is it a whole grain? Uh, you know, and what length is it? And then is the grain broken or not broken? And is the grain chalky or not? So chalky means the grain is white color inside, right? Uh, uh, so so that usually indicates that there might be some kind of uh, weevil or, or bug or whatever uh, rice, you know, uh, some kind of vandu or whatever right, inside the, the, the rice over there. Um, then you can also tell in terms of color, right? Uh, so reflectance and so on. Uh, so, so uh, rice, I mean, has many, many different types of things, but uh, if you look at the export standards of a particular country, that's a good way to identify what are the parameters, and with competent vision, uh, actually you can do a lot of things. 
uh, and the question of course is whether you know how you set up your apparatus such that you can detect for some of these variations in rice okay uh, so Sandhya asks can artificial intelligence affect human health and so on so I mean in terms of affect human health I guess it depends on the application right so uh, uh, in terms of a negative uh, sort of application I suppose if the I mean ultimately AI is just software right so if you make the software uh, do nasty things uh, then obviously there might be some impact on your health so I think I think it really depends on the circumstance uh, that you are talking about here and the specific uh, situation so maybe Sandhya again you can elaborate a bit more and, and, and give me an example of a particular situation uh, because the question is a bit broad uh, at this point in time uh, Sahana basically asked uh, what computer programming language should you learn okay <laughs> I, I laugh at this kind of question because uh, no there's, there's so many right uh, so I think I think okay so here's the thing right today if you want to learn yeah go and learn Python and so on but what's happening is that if you want to use AI there is something called a no code approach or low code approach N O C O D or L O W C O D and today you'll find is that a lot of drag and drop tools and so on like scratch the version of it like it looks like scratch uh, where you can actually uh, perform uh, certain AI routines and tasks and all that uh, now when you need to learn programming is actually at the point in time when you want to build your own algorithms now today is Python but you know by the time you guys graduate and go on you know there will be something else right uh, you know, other languages are coming up and so on you know uh, so yeah if you want to do it today I will, I will recommend Python or you can do R uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, you know, you can also uh, use uh, no-code or low-code approaches and, and learn the mechanics uh, of it in the first place. Any qualification uh, to create AI? Uh, okay, so I must probably answer this question by saying that I have no qualification. <laughs> right? it's, it's basically your, your ability to learn and to try out. Right? Uh, myself, I didn't study formally in a school these things. I studied mechanical engineering, which they don't teach any of these things over here, right? Uh, uh, instead, uh, all I know is from the stuff that I have tried, and obviously, you know, uh, it's not just about learning things, you also have to apply them. And over time, as you apply them, then you might get better at it. Uh, so, the question about AI take over humans. So, earlier I explained there are five questions AI can answer. If, if, if as a human, you can only do these five questions, nothing else, then you have a problem. Okay? <laughs> but, uh, uh, but because AI at this point in time is answering these five questions and so on. I think it's a bit far away from that. Uh, what a lot of people, are smart, uh, smart people, are saying about this is that they are saying that you know uh, what will happen is that there will be an AI human augmentation. That means everybody will have their own AI assistant, right? So that's the kind of thing that they are suggesting that might happen. Uh, so JMT quality of rice, last kill detection. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, depends what last kill talking about here, right? Because uh, normally we want to check for rice quality and so on. They will do what is called a, a statistical sampling, right? So uh, if you if you learn statistics and sampling and so on, you will understand what I mean. But you don't to, to check rice. You don't check the, all the rice, right? You take a certain sample of it. So in like a, a ten kilo, you might take a hundred gram, uh, and then subsequently you you will you will check based on hundred gram, and then you will extrapolate based on hundred grams. What is the confidence level, right, of your of your of your of your prediction of the rice quality uh, across the entire sample? Uh, so I mean all this is going to statistics right but we don't grade all the rice we just take a sample of it okay so Sahana another question helping farmers productivity air pollution okay so pollution control right okay pollution is interesting right? so pollution is because people are polluting right so the question is becomes that a are there laws to prevent it yes they are so why are people still doing it? Maybe enforcement, maybe a bunch of other things are happening. So if there are specific problems in those areas, which you know can be solved by these five questions over here, right? Then of course you know AI can help control pollution. But AI itself was not a magic bullet, right? You still need people to not just make the laws. You need to enforce the laws. You need to update the law as well, and also you know uh, 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 educate people not to do such things, right? So. So all that is necessary. Uh, AI is not a silver bullet. It is not a magic bullet. It will not take away all the problems. Uh, ultimately, people still have to have the will and the intention to do things properly. Impact on the future world. Uh, I mean, uh, honestly, I think 
it already is having an impact in many ways. Uh, so you know, everything that you see about the YouTube algorithms, uh, what kind of thing it recommends you, the kind of Facebook feed that you get, AI is already affecting that. And I think I think we will see much more of that. Uh, I know many, many people have written about these things. Uh, so I, I, I will leave it to them, uh, for you to read from them, uh, what they think the impact will be in the future world. Uh, but I think the future ultimately is what you make of it. So if you want to move the future in a particular way, then you should try and, and bring that over there. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Malipan made a comment over here. Okay, climatic change. Okay, so Sana sent a private message here, but she asked about how AI in climatic change uh, purposes, right? So again, for climate change, uh, what kind of issues are there today? Right? So today the issues are around uh, sea level rise, around uh, temperature fluctuations, around uh, uh, unpredictable, unpredictable rainfall and so on. Uh, so of this sort of things, uh, if there's some value for prediction, like you know, point number four over here, how many will there be in the future? right? So if you use some kind of prediction and so on, I think there'll be some value over that in terms of saving lives and so on. Uh, but of course in other things as well, like carbon capture and so on, those things you need different technologies. Uh, so AI can support, but I think there are also a lot of other things in terms of energy sustainability that we need to do in order to uh, reverse uh, climate change. So how can AI help people in poverty develop themselves? This is a very, very complicated question because the assumption here in this question is that people in poverty are not developing themselves. Right? That, that's the assumption here. So the poverty is not a simple subject. Okay? Poverty is a complex matter and it depends on so many things. It depends on the social structure of society they're in. It depends on how we as a people treat people who are lesser uh, 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 privileged than us. It depends on our value system. Uh, it depends on the economic opportunities that are present for people. It depends on the kind of, of uh, you know, uh, social environment uh, that we have, right? So. Will AI be in itself able to do or address poverty? Not by itself. But can it support that? Definitely. But I think poverty is an issue that existed long before AI came around. Right? And I think there are far more fundamental things that we need to address in society in order to fully address poverty. And the first thing is that do we actually believe in an equal society or do we believe in a pyramidal society where some people, you know, must be at the top, and some people must be at the bottom. And so, uh, I think, I think, I think this is uh, beyond the scope of, of, of AI. It's about our value system and how we choose to run our economy as well. Uh, so, AI research in India. Okay, so I will show you this later because I actually have some things I wanted to show you uh, through my browser. I got about seven minutes for my segment. Okay, I'm going to pause the questions for now here, and I want to just finish up. Okay. Uh, so there's one more example, but it's okay. I think you can Google it yourself. Okay, this example. It's all available on YouTube. You can see it. Um, I want to show you three uh, URLs for you to go and learn and so on. Okay, so I'm going to switch my share over. Just give me a minute. So, sorry, someone is uh, cutting grass outside okay, in the house. And so there's this background machine noise over there. <laughs> I can't ask them to stop, so <laughs> you have to bear with me. Is it audible now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm back. Okay. So, uh, so there are a few links I share with you, but let me. Uh, okay. So first thing was is that responsible AI for youth. If you Google it, so this is the Indian government's approach uh, towards uh, AI, right? And, and they're calling it responsible AI and so on. So, if India basically has published a national AI strategy. And what they have said is that they want to uh, be the leader for what they call responsible AI. So the research in India is directed very much towards that uh, in, in following up to the question that was asked. Uh, it's around AI ethics, AI privacy, uh, social use of AI and so on. 
so in that regard, this particular uh, 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 sub website, uh, part of uh, Meti, right? Uh, basically, uh, also has uh, you know uh, some things for you guys to learn. Uh, so if you're a student and so on, you can actually go and sign up for the online orientation, and you can do a, a simple course uh, created by them. Uh, and I think. Uh, 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 Mr. Valipan sir, you can probably work with the school to also figure out if this sort of uh, program can run subsequently for, for subsequent phases with them as well. Um, so this is one of it, okay, I, and there's a lot over here in this thing here, but I will let you all uh, look through it at your own leisure time, okay. So the next one is that there is uh, experiments with Google, right, so this is quite fun. There is a whole bunch of AI uh, experiments. Uh, they can be done on a mobile phone, they can be done on a computer and so on, uh, which show you different types of uh, AI technologies in, in process. And it also, best thing is it explains to you why it works that way, right? Uh, so for example, uh, if you go to Teachable ma Machines, Teachable Machines is quite interesting, right? Uh, so how it, so, sorry, I will show you the video of it. So you all try it out as well. People are training computers and creating machine learning models to explore all kinds of new ideas. New ways to interact. Yes. To understand the world. To play. And experiment. But machine learning is pretty intimidating to get into. So we've been wondering, what if it wasn't? With Teachable Machine, we set out to make it easier for anyone to create machine learning models without needing to write any machine learning code. When it first launched in 2017, it allowed everyone to get a feeling for what machine learning is all about. But now, Teachable Machine puts the power of machine learning in your hands, allowing you to save your models and use them in your own projects. So let's say you want to build a model to recognize you versus your dog. You just open up the site, record samples of you, and samples of your dog. Click train, and you instantly have your own machine learning model, which you can use in your sites, apps, and more. You can upload your model to host it online, or download it to work entirely on device. With Teachable Machine, you can create custom models for all sorts of things. Using images, audio, or even poses. Personalized machine learning models for the things that matter to you. And folks have already been trying it out, using Teachable Machine in their own experiments, solving problems in their communities, or even just at home. Start creating and see where your ideas take you. So this is quite cool, right? You can basically augment some of your uh, mega project and so on with a recognition mechanism uh, by using teachable machine and so you can integrate it uh, so so there are many other uh, uh, sort of uh, you know experiments in this thing that you can go and check out and you know more importantly you can apply it directly uh, so in fact you can see some projects on people using arduino to get a teachable machine in order to do uh, certain kind of uh, activities and so on right so uh, this is another second one to explore uh, third one is that uh, my own company we do some apps and so on for you to learn as well right, so this particular app i want to show you is that if you you basically can you know uh, add the photo and a particular style to it and you can combine it and it will come up with something else right so let's say you got a photo of einstein and you want to make it like the screen uh, the famous painting right and so if you stylize the image what you get is something that looks like this right so you can adjust the degree of it that you want to stylize and so on. Uh, but basically, we also explain what actually happens uh, behind that. Um, so there are many apps like this out there, but I think it's a good way for you to learn and get started with it. Okay. Uh, so I've come to the end of my sharing session. All right. Uh, so any questions, I think later we have the Q&A, and so we can probably uh, have a chat over there as well. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Maliapan. Thank you so much for elaborating and uh, we could see a lot of applications and possibilities and especially for resolving the societal challenges. The example that you have given us uh, is uh, wonderful and it will open the eyes now, especially for the young minds. And 
now they will go to the paddy field and then see how a can be implemented there now it's a great thing uh, thank you so much for uh, come uh, giving us a very good compilation and then a uh, lot of educative material not only educative side it is uh, it will open the innovation doors now okay thank you so much yeah thank you and uh, please ma'am uh, please go ahead with the second one and uh, mr virapan will answer the questions uh, by the yeah later Later. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. One, one more guy is there, sir. He's having a doubt and he want to ask some doubts about his project, sir. Can he proceed, sir? He weapon, sir. Uh, sure. I mean, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent morning, sir. Sir, I am Vikas from Grain Eleven, sir. I have made a project uh, name called Automatic Milling Trolley, sir. Uh, this is useful in uh, supermarkets to build the products with ourselves, sir. I am having a question, sir. How can I implement my project in uh, artificial intelligence, sir? So uh, that's a, that's a broad question. Uh, what is a trolley supposed to do? What is the problem it's trying to solve? How can I implement my project in artificial intelligence? How was it working? Vikas sir is asking how it works. So give an explanation. Sir, uh, uh, in our project we made a RFID code, sir. It will be printed at every product, sir. And uh, with RFID reader, if you put the product inside a trolley, it will be automatically scanned. And uh, we can get the product name and the amount in the screen, sir. Okay, so you basically want to, so, so to put it simply, the problem you're trying to solve is that you want to make the process of uh, of being able to build a yes, customer sir. very efficient right you want to make a person very efficient right uh, so earlier when we were talking about the types of questions ai can uh, address right one of the type of question is that uh, you know is something x or y right so which means that you can use a uh, image recognition system uh, and identify what kind of item it is because once you can do that then you can tag it to the price amount as well which means that you may not need a RFID in order to be able to identify the price of the product uh, simply by the visual aspect of the product or even by reading the MSRP at the back of the product you can identify that this is what product and how much it should be and uh, you know through a visual recognition you can basically identify what are all items they have taken so in fact today there are some uh, convenience uh, store uh, you know so convenience store is basically the convenience store is unmanned which means there's nobody in it uh, and you simply go in there uh, you take what you want and then you come out it will automatically build everything to your credit card or to your paypal or to your you know uh, paytm and so on uh, so uh, such stores actually are quite widespread uh, there are about 300 such stores in china uh, singapore has about I think 20 or 30 such stores as well uh, but uh, uh, I think I think in India also there there are some uh, I think in Delhi and so on uh, people are trying out. Uh, but yeah, I mean so where we are moving towards is no longer the use of RFID for item detection. We are moving towards using computer vision. Uh, the challenge, however, is that you got to train the data so that even if you see the object in any orientation, you know, front facing at the side from on top, you must be able to recognize what it is. What is it? Uh, so you have to put up a lot of cameras in a particular store or shop or whatever to identify who is taking what items specifically. So you can tag the right items to the right people. Uh, so yeah, I mean, so in terms of implementing it, you can even try something simple. Right? Use the teachable machine. All right. Uh, first, be able to classify between like five items, which one is what item, right? And then have a, a call for a table, right? So when you identify a particular item or particular class, you know what the amount is as well, and then you can add together the amounts and then you can say okay this is what your bill is going to be so something simple like that you can try out i mean uh, in fact with the teachable machine which i just uh, showed the video uh, to you 
Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anybody else, ma'am? Shanti, ma'am. Grade 11 IP children, regarding the Python project, if you have any doubt, you can raise. Jagat Guru. Jagat. Newton. That's excellent morning, sir. Please tell me. Yeah. Sir, during your presentation, you said Python is good for AI, sir. At this point in Why time. Is at this point in time. <laughs> no, what is that, sir? Okay, so, so to decide whether or not a programming language is useful or not, right, it depends on how many other people are using it. Right? So a lot of times, uh, today, if you want to do software development, if you want to create projects and so on, you want to be working in a language where there are easy resources available, the accessible resources available. So if today, if you go to like GitHub, or if you go to some of the very popular sites like Stack Overflow, uh, where people are sharing about AI projects and so on, they are all writing their codes in Python. So obviously, if you want to work with them, if you want to borrow their work, if you want to build off their work, you need to be working in a language that is similar to what they're already using, right? Uh, so it's it's like, you know, it, it's if everyone is using a mobile phone and you don't have a mobile phone, you'll be left out, right? So in the same way, today, everyone is using Python to do AI projects. So today, if you want to get into it, you need to learn Python. So actually, no, tomorrow it can be different, right? It's like something else. So we are actually in IP uh, informatic practice. Our children are working with Python projects. Sir. So okay. we are doing a lot of projects on Python. So now they are actually looking forward to uh, do with community issues and uh, you know to connect with uh, AI also. So I think uh, they need uh, guidance on project development. So uh, might be we could again get back to you, sir, in this regard. So a lot of projects on the go. Sure. So, so the other thing about about uh, doing projects or software projects, right, is that you need to think about deployment. How will the project be deployed to the actual person, right? And, and what's the mechanism? Uh, you know, because for example, like earlier the project, right? So, so if you want to actually do a device, right, you can't have like so many wires and all that over there, right? It needs to be packaged properly. It needs to be packaged either in an app, in a, a web app or interface or some kind of a, a proper, you know, interaction device. Uh, so. The, the step that I think uh, many students uh, should try and take is that try to get a project to move towards deployment uh, because that can be quite instructive in itself. Uh, so so at, once you got it to work, that's good. Next step is to make it work so that people who may not know about the project can also make use of it. right? And yes. to package it in a particular way that they can do that. Thanks, sure, sir. Yes. Any other questions, ma'am? Yes, Ramya ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I would invite our under chief guest, Mr. Sashwan Gangwal, to deliver a speech. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, so thank you so much for uh, inviting me today. And I think it's been great listening to Rapan about the AI and sustainable impact and and as a fund manager I can tell you that it's taking up a, a pace which is incredible and I'm I'm really happy to see students um, you know taking that up at such an early age but I think um, in the interest of time I'll try and keep uh, my segment short so basically just to brief about Infinity Box what we do is uh, replace single-use plastic containers which are used to deliver food with reusable containers and uh, we use each container over a hundred times. So the the idea came because I think uh, when we used to stay in hostel we used to order in a lot and um, the amount of plastic that came with every order sort of single-use plastic that came with every order um, was well um, this kind of disheartening right the amount of plastic waste that was just there and we even we when we threw it away in dustbins we knew that it would end up in landfills and not uh, not get recycled so i wanted to do something about it and i was grateful i'm grateful to have people have had people around me who were supportive enough for me to do that so we started with something very small just came up with a, an idea on paper that we'll reuse containers because <clears throat> that's the most environment friendly alternative instead of paper or any other single use container. 
And we did that in Kharagpur, which is where I'm from. Uh, and that was a successful pilot. Then we went and did the same thing in Delhi, which was again, um, fortunately successful. We had high adoptions. We would literally call people up and ask them if they wanted their order in that container. And then um, um, we got a chance to work with Swiggy. Uh, and we did a pilot with them in Bombay. And um, thankfully, that also went well, where we were able to, uh, we were able to reach out to uh, thousands of people and reduce quite a few uh, kgs of plastic waste from being dumped into landfills. And um, the, the idea is that, obviously, because of the pandemic, the operations uh, did were affected quite a lot. It had, they have come to a halt. Uh, but now that we're looking to begin again in both Bombay and Bangalore, the idea is to reach out to more and more people and reduce as much single-use plastic waste as possible. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, just uh, it, it, this year has been, uh, I think for everyone, it's been quite challenging. And we've seen challenges which we never thought we would. But uh, we've been grateful to have been a part of few international incubators and um, uh, yep, reach, reaching out to more people. So let's see how that goes. But I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions around circular economy, around um, the like the usage of single use plastic in India, um, or some specific about specifics about infinity boxes solution. Yes, Jainti, ma'am, do you have any questions now? Yeah, uh, our students have uh, developed uh, some innovative projects and uh, Mr. Rajesh Shekhar, uh, you were mentioning uh, something on the sustainable uh, solution for packaging in recent discussions. I think you can ask uh, Mr. Sagar yeah. Mr. Rajesh Shekhar, can you unmute? Rajshikha, sir, do you have questions, sir? Regarding... Actually, we are planning for one project, sir, which is based on the human excreta is converted into manure. Any suggestion for that project? Actually, it is a mobile toilet. From the mobile toilet, how do we convert the human waste into manure? Um... Okay, again, this is not my area of expertise, but mm -hmm. basically um, uh, I, I'm happy to look it up and connect you to a few people who I know that, that they've done something similar, that yes, at the end of the day, they use uh, human waste and convert and process it to extract, well, also produce gases, which would help power uh, produce electricity and then also use it manure. I can, I'm happy to connect you to them. But this isn't, that's not my area of expertise, unfortunately. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, our Just students have developed the innovative technologies for using a bamboo. Mm -hmm. I have seen some projects from them and uh, and a lot of uh, packaging uh, types also. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. I yeah, think actually, uh, Mr. Raji Shekhar, you can highlight yes, those yes, projects yes, to him and get his uh, expert opinion. Yeah. Yes, sir. Actually, we did two projects. One is instead of plastic star we designed a coconut star sir, which is made by coconut leaf mm -hmm. another one is yep. instead of plastic bottle we designed bamboo water bottles sir. right so so with respect to so an interesting fact right and in india pet which is the plastic that is used to manufacture these bottles that is very highly recycled the average recycling rate is around 60 percent uh, and India outperforms almost all US, uh, well, North American or European nations in that, right? So that is a problem. Even even then, the the problem of uh, the single use plastic waste generated just by PT or let's say HDP uh, is very high. So it's great that you're targeting uh, such problems, right? Now, with respect to specifically the packaging aspects of these two solutions. So I think with respect to the straw, the major issues, there have been several solutions that have come in to tackle the single-use plastic straw, right? Uh, there have been paper straws, there have been metal straws, there have been um, a bioplastic straw, which is basically a combination of um, plant-based material and the existing uh, like plastics. 
right so uh, they just change the polymer a bit so so the idea is that the the problem there is that how long does this straw uh, how long can the straw stay inside the liquid without melting or uh, what is the we call it the stability so how long can it sustain that because there have been cases that it melted and or it dissolved and because of that well there were, the consumer adoption was quite low there were cases against the restaurants that adopted it etc so i would say that the straws that you're designing i think uh, uh, you should look at you should test out the time that it can stay in that liquid for a while and then comes the other aspect of like uh, is there a taste etc in your mouth because because that affects uh, the adoption and when you're looking to scale it up as in get other schools or get children to do that at home as well then you need to look at uh, like quite a few other things as in for how long can they sustain and how do you package them etc but i think that's the next that's something that you should look at later on first is just test out the duration of or the stability of these straws uh with respect to the plastic bottles you said that you using coconut fibers that's very very cool so so i think I i've seen a solution in 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 netherlands where they were using elephant grass um uh, it's something that grows in netherlands which basically captures four times the co2 uh, as compared to any other tree and they're using that to manufacture a lot of plastic materials so i think i can share that with you and you can look at their story and how they have developed it but with respect with with respect to the bottles again the the usual things are like uh, their shelf life stability uh, in a sense that how long can they hold each liquid um what is their weight uh, what is the weight of the bottle because you don't want it to be very heavy because then transportation issues etc right so uh, and, and the third aspect is the sturd- sturdiness of the bottle like does it squish very easily etc so these are the usual things which you look at when when you're looking at any sort of a packaging material right but what what really is great is that you're actually looking to replace uh, single use plastic uh, through that so i think what i can recommend um obviously i have to look at the product to understand and ask these questions which i'm asking you but what i can recommend is for the bottles that you're not able to replace just ensure that they get to a recycling plant and i think that would also help a lot so we are actually thank you, uh, thank you sir add on the mm-hmm. actually one more project which is we make the plastic into convert it to road sir which is the road, real yeah. end point of yeah. the plastic so you convert plastics into road right the, road, yes, so you sir, basically make road. bricks etc so so ah, there, yes, yeah sir. so there are companies in india that do that uh, i think uh, the the oldest one is eclectic technologies yes, it started by this guy called mr binish desai yes, he basically um, came up with this formula when he was very young where they were he basically makes bricks out of plastic and yes. they have a lot of applications including one of them being roads as well actually we so think, uh, take we took this project to the government and we also met certain administrations rega- uh, people regarding this also regarding plastic roads and we got few insight on this and i think we are still working on the development of this project and to implement also right so i be i'd be happy to connect you to mr vinish desai he was sure. so i also run a podcast series and uh, he was one of my guests and i know him quite well so i think that would be helpful because he's already doing it he's been doing it for the last i think 20 years and uh, yeah he has his like his work is quite amazing and like, given that he has already done it i think he'd be the best person to speak to about it uh, in the sense that why rein went the wheel right he has already done it so you can uh, work with him if, with like collaborate with him and uh, figure out uh, like if there are other opportunities possible thank you thank, thank you so much sir. thank you sir uh, mr gangwal uh, thank you so much for that uh, Uh, uh taking us to the another uh, for collaboration with another p- person and uh, it is interesting to hear your views and i have seen lot of podcasts from you and uh, it's a very educative for all of us and then uh, it's very interesting also so i have a personal question in terms of economics uh, how do we justify that these things are taking a uh, bringing values to the consumers now I think I lost you for a sec, but then yeah, thank you so much for sharing uh, positive feedback about the podcast. Uh, I think the the reason I started that was just because we wanted to reach out to more and more people and make them more aware about uh, circular economy and its application across industries. Because I think it's high time that we did that. 
and yeah we've received great feedback we have listeners in what 50 countries now so it's it's always a good thing when people are appreciative of uh, your work but then uh, let's see how it goes i think we're just beginning i think it's it's incredible to see that students at such a young age uh, as part of the atul mission are already looking at social entrepreneurship uh, as a potential career path and i think it just makes me genuinely happy that that's the case and it's not just the usual um curry paths that we have taken in india so again thank you for uh in, in hoping and thank you for inviting me to this and i hope i can help out in the future sashwan sir i have a question sir uh, we have children mm-hmm. from grade 11 um uh, commerce student so what would you like to you are an young entrepreneur what would you like to share your views regarding uh, this uh, uh, you know merging with swiggy and mckinsley this entrepreneurship development can you explain them few points regarding this sir right so i think um, i come from a very indian usual background right that you you take up engineering and you go to an iit uh, then you try and get the best job possible there and um, i think that's that's like a lot of uh, that's that's a large chunk of a population every year like more than 1 million people write the exam so um i think it was during my college ex- like the experiences that i had and i think that's how i know mr virapan bef- like before this uh, uh you know event as well that we were both a part of this incredible incubator called unleash where 1000 young uh, change makers are invited from all over the world um and we go through a seven day boot camp and you get to talk to like minded people so i think it's been uh, my experiences with unleash with halt with undp um uh, that that i've only spoken to such incredible folks who are working who are doing some amazing work in the social impact space that i also wanted to do something and um uh, yeah like i've tried and failed at uh, quite a few things right i've tried out solutions to help out construction workers because uh, yeah i i saw how they lived and we wanted to change that i uh, we have developed solutions around refugees to help them in kenya and all of them have picked up but they they were never really scaled and um the idea is that um yeah like despite the fact that i had a job at mckinsey which is which is one of the best jobs i think you can get at iit kgp but um I always wanted to create impact because I thought that um like that that's sort of my passion and I don't know how to put it into words but um yeah so just try to do that and I was again I I've, I've been grateful enough to have had people around me who have been supportive enough of that so with respect to social entrepreneurship I wish I had a better answer but I think it comes from your passion to create impact like unless you want to do that you won't um really be you know putting in the effort that it takes because social entrepreneurship is an is in let's say it's an upcoming space but it's still niche and at the end of the day financial returns matter a lot more than impact uh, that you're creating despite whatever you hear right despite whatever is said so um the the one thing that i have learned and i think my experience with let's say finance etc has taught me is that when you're looking out to you know start something of your own uh whether it's impact focused or not at the end of the day the financial model the feasibility of the business is something which is very important so at infinity box we've had so much financial due diligence done by swiggy done by other aggregators because at the end of the day you are creating impact but then you have to have a model which uh, well makes money uh because if if you don't have a model which does both uh then nobody will support you then you're basically looking for grants and uh, and that is not a model that works so i think the only advice that i would have and i'm not uh, i haven't been in this space for that long i'm just 24 so i think uh, there'd be a much be- much better people out there to take advice from but, but the only advice i would have is actually two uh, one would be that uh, always have people around you that will help you uh, and that can provide you the network to do that because i think reaching out to big players like swiggy was only possible because um i was uh, uh, because of me being at it kharagpur and people like help willing to help me out because of the network there the second thing would be that whenever you're looking at to build out a startup always always ensure that it is financially feasible uh along with the impact part 
because the day that it's not you won't have any backers unfortunately so i think those would be the two pieces of advice that i would have thank you thank you so much sir thank you ma'am so chatta ma'am anything you have to thank you so much sir it was such an eye opener for our grade 11 children almost all our doubts you have covered with a single answer thank you so much <laughs> yeah that's true yeah thank you so my pleasure yeah. thank you sir and you are setting the impact tone now among the students and i'm happy to see the passion your passion in developing passion among other others and then especially the younger generation and achieving such targets at the age of 24 it's something we have to admire a lot and thank you so much for setting such tones and then encouraging our students and definitely they will come to you now they will disturb you a lot now <laughs> and so and thank you i'd be i'd be happy to help i think it i'm genuinely very happy to see the uh, students uh, at such a young age taking up social entrepreneurship because um at during my school days at least i did not see that happening so i'm just glad that there's a wave of change and i hope it's here to stay and and more than happy to help out yeah. Yeah. today we had a great blend and one side artificial intelligence to resolve the complex issues and on the other side uh, entrepreneurial challenges from the young mind uh, from the viewpoint of a young entrepreneur and uh, it's a great plan for the students now today of uh, today's age yeah thank yes. you thank continuously you. we are actually getting so much of questions from students now they are actually trying to convert all the a projects into product and now become as entrepreneur <laughs> it's a collaboration yes. actually is very thank you so much uh, uh, thank you so much sir actually we need lot more time because of lot of questions coming and uh, i think virapan sir somebody is asking about uh, iron man sandhya so they are asking that it combines both machine and artificial technology so yeah so i, I basically was just uh, writing an answer in text there but yeah uh, i think for all of these things right whatever you see you know so so they will say that uh, you know magic is basically technology that we don't understand right that 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 technology is indistinguishable uh, is what we call magic uh, so so i am and all these things and so on i think the first thing to ask ourselves is that what are the various sub components within that uh, so the i am and suit basically has a few things to it uh, there is the jarvis which is the you know that the personal assistant that is in there there is all the uh, there's a, there's a flying uh, you know autonomous flying component over there uh then there is the you know uh, automated uh, robotic metal suit uh, component over there so to to take something that is imaginary that is fictional and so on and try and bring it back to reality uh, you have to start breaking things down right into what are the component level uh, things that you got to address and then you got to look at one by one these things you know uh, what are the challenges or issues with it uh, uh and then you'll find that you know that in fact uh, what you currently see is i am sure uh many sub parts of it are already being developed or being done in in, in their own way uh it may not have come together as iron man so because people don't see a need for that right uh but uh things that are in uh science fiction uh typically they are product of the human imagination right so uh, that human imagination uh, not just the science fiction authors have it but even the scientists and technologists who are also doing it also have it as well uh so yeah i mean i So, so I think the question of can we bring something imaginary to real world? Why ask that question? <laughs> If it can be imagined, it can. <laughs> so. Yeah, actually, they are working on car- cartoon characters also. So a lot of uh, you know they are they are doing on animations and all this. So game designing probably a lot of projects involved. So they are asking so many questions. That's why. <laughs> Oh, fine. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, we have seen flying cars in Hollywood movies a uh, few years back. Now it's all coming to the market now. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's coming to the market. We have seen it. Yeah, yeah. we have seen the drones how uh, playing the main role in a uh, lot of the vigilance these days, and uh, yeah, it's all uh, Hollywood experience uh, transferred to the common man now. <laughs> yeah. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Can we, sir? Ali uh, Apple, sir, can we? Can Sessions, yeah. Please, yeah. Please, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. Ramya, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So finally, it importantly, I would like to call Mr. Radhishikran to deliver the vote of thanks. 
Excellent morning to all. I deem it's an honor and privilege to purpose the vote of thanks on this occasion. First and foremost, I thank our correspondent, Ashushan Kassar, who has always encouraging us by giving support, vision, and commitment. I thank our secretary, Anand Sankashar, for his kindness, interest, hospitality, and support. I thank our chief guests, Mr. Veerappan Swaminathan and Mr. Shashwat Gangwal, who, despite their busy schedule, have found time to grace this occasion. I thank our well-wisher, Valiyapan sir, mentor of Jen Atal Innovation Mission, for his great support and guidance. My heartfelt thanks to our principal ma'am, vice principal ma'am, my Atal team members, and all my colleagues for their valuable contribution, guidance, and encouragement in all our efforts. Once again, I thank all good hearts who worked behind the screen to make this session successfully. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir, Rajshikran, sir. Uh, sir, we would like to, I mean, after all this uh, situations get better, I think uh, we can invite them to school and, uh, you know, we can have a session uh, where yeah. they can interact with students. In a... Yeah, definitely. We want to enjoy the hospitality of SSV. That's I could say that, that one very good dish I had it during my visit to your school and and yes, Mr. Virapan will love this and then our uh, another uh, Swiggy partner also will enjoy such things. Uh, definitely, we will visit and we will uh, we will bring them to your school. Yes, sir. thank you. So thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much for joining. Me. What thank you for having you. me here. Uh, thank my you, pleasure. Sir. And all the best. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Yeah. Virapan. It's a great honor for us to hear a lot of advice from you. And uh, it's a great blend of uh, experience. And then uh, it's going, uh, our students are encouraged now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.